Okay, good morning all. Today's topic is cavity, liner, bases and varnish. Introduction. It is a specialized material that is used to prepare, used in a prepared cavity for the protection of pulp from the evidence. Okay, different pulp and evidence are present in the tube and to go on this irritation with the pulp. To reduce the pulp and irritation, we are using this material. And Several types of pulpal resistance are there. First one is disease process that includes caries, attrition, and erosion. In caries, there is several hypoorganisms in the person and they cause the irritation to the pulp. And in attrition and erosion, the dental tube will be exposed and it will cause pulpal irritation. Then mechanical irritation due to cavity compression. It causes uh, when we prepare a cavity for the restoration, it will offer some heat production and pressure that we give to the tooth that causes irritation. And uh, this is the cavity that prepares for the restoration. And for reduction of this irritation, we have to use proper healing and the coolant and we have to use the pressure that is limited. Then Chemical components of phosphoric material that includes phosphoric acid in zinc phosphate cement. Phosphoric acid are uh, used for the zinc phosphate cement, and the molecules of the phosphoric acid is very low and it will penetrate to the dental tubules and it will cause some irritation to the pulp. Then acid excess. Every single percentage phosphoric acid is used for almost the restoration and this causes some irritation also. Then thermal irritation by metallic restoration. And thermal irritation is due to uh, metallic restorations. Metallic restorations are probably excellent thermal conductors and they promote thermal sensitivity when hot or cold is consumed. And Last one is micro leakage. It is a gap that is formed between the restoration and the tooth. And there will be a microscopic gap there, uh, that will be present. And it causes bacterial penetration into the gap and secondary caries process. It is also a pulp uh, irritation. Then this cavity varnish, liner, and base are adjunct material to the restorative material. It is not used as a restorative material assets. Okay. In this picture, we can see a dental amalgam restoration, and we need that there is a chemical protection that is applied, and we need that there is a mechanical protection, and a pulpal medication is also placed. This pulpal medication is called as cavity liner, and the mechanical protection that is called as base, and chemical protection we use varnish. And remaining dentine thickness, it involves how much dentine is remain after the cavity compression. Okay. According to that, we use uh, this cavity line of base and varnish. And all of remaining dentine thickness, actually remaining dentine thickness, if it is only a 0.5 amount, there will be an effect of toxic substance to the pulp will be 25 percent. There is one half amount of remaining the day thickness is present, it will cost only 10 percent. And if it is at 2 amount, there will be minimum or nil uh, toxic substance to the pump will be present. Then the base. Okay. As we told earlier, a uh, base is used as a mechanical barrier to the pressure that is exerted by the perspiration. And similar bases are applied in thicker lens that is 0.75 mm or more. And it is used in beneath the perspective material to protect pulp from thermal, galvanic shock, and chemical irritation. And zinc phosphate and zinc oxide cements are commonly used, as well as some polycarboxylate and fast setting GACs are also used. It is mainly of two types. High strength bases and low strength bases. These high strength bases are used to 
provide thermal protection for the pulp as well as mechanical support for the restoration. This high strength resistance is placed in the amalgam restoration and so okay, Commonly used the zinc phosphate, zinc polycarboxate, glass aroma, and reinforced zinc oxide ethanol. In low strength basis, it is having a minimal strength and low rigidity. And its function is barrier to irritating chemicals and it provides a therapeutic effect in the pulp and commonly used the cancer hydroxide and single cell And properties, thermal properties, first of all thermal properties, the main uh, must provide a thermal protection to the pulp. Thermal conductivity of most similar ways the similar to two structure. And zinc phosphate and zinc oxide eugenol cements are better insulated. They, have, they are having a lower thermal conductivity, so we can place uh, between the metallic illustrations and have a less insulating ability than Portland cements and uh, glass ion cements. For an effective thermal protection, the base should have a minimum thickness of 0.75 the minimum thickness of base is 0.75 or more. Okay, these are the different types of cement and thermal conductivity. Then protection against the chemical insult. Okay, this base car act as a barrier against penetration of irritating constituents such as acids and monocle. And single cell that is the most effective that is close to the pulp cavity. So it is having a toothening effect when we place in the deeper cavity. So it will be very helpful in the deeper cavity. And polycarboxylate and glass and all bases are also used as chemical barriers. Polycarboxylate also uh, has a uh, good property to the pulp by So it is lesser than single-cell internal cement. Then therapeutic effect. And some patients are used for their therapeutic benefit also. As we told earlier, zinc oxide regional has an oxidant effect on the pulp. So in deeper cavities, when we place this, uh, there will be a less chance of pain. Then strength. The cement base must have a sufficient strength to withstand the forces of condensation. And it should have a better uh, strength to uh, fracture or distortion and the maceration stresses. And also the cement base should develop sufficient strength rapidly in order to allow daily condensation of amalgam. The minimum strength required for a base is 0.5 to 1.5 megapascal. Uh, these are the different uh, base materials and their Composite strength. Uh, when it's time to for every material, the strength is increased. Then chemical concentration. Actually, we are uh, selecting the base according to design of the cavity. What shape of cavity is we are going to prepare? According to that, we will uh, select the material. And second one is type of permanent illustrative material. For the amalgam illustration and all, we use some zinc uh, phosphate or zinc oxide But in composite uh, illustration, uh, we use a permanent illustrative material. If it is a composite one, we do not use zinc oxide because it uh, delays the polymerization right of the composite illustration. And proximity to the pulp and the cavity pulp. If it is a deeper cavity, we should not by zinc phosphate cement as we told earlier. Uh, there will be a acid penetration to the central tissue and it will also some damage to the pulp. So we do not use that. Then different types of cements and their advantages. Zinc phosphate cement is efficient. Uh, it is a, it does an effective way for thermal insulation. 
and its advantage is it helps to reduce thermal conductivity of metal concentration and blocks undercuts and punctuation on these of calf concentrations uh, its main disadvantage is no chemical activity is present and no anti catalytic property and there is a pulpal irritation is present next one is zinc oxide you do not know that is having an advantage of excellent sealing ability then it also has a nanotech effect and bacterial standing in nature so it is very helpful in micro cavities and its main disadvantage is in high concentration it acts as a chemical irritant to also over some irritation to the pulp in the earlier stage when we place after some time it will be neutralized and it will not adhere to the enamel or bending and it is having a low strength and high solubility. 